We've come to London today to show you our photography tip. We're going to show you how to use hard lighting, hard flash. Usually we use soft boxes and brollies to soften the light, but we're going to show you how to use a hard light to best effect. And we're going to be using our model, Liana, and our guest photographer today is me, James. The technique we're going to show you today is using a hard light source. Now, in the videos so far, we've used soft light sources, and that is that the light is larger than what we've been photographing. We've been using large soft boxes and brollies to spread the light out and get a nice soft light on our subject. But today, we're going to use a hard light source, and that is when the light source is smaller than the subject you're photographing. So here, this, this strobe, the light source is smaller than Leanne's head here, so the light is going to be hard and harsh. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to we've come to like a, a, a grungy area of London and we're going to use this background to, to give a nice bit of edge to our shot. We're using just a standard flash, this is a Nikon SB900 and a standard trigger. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom the flash in. A lot of modern flashes have got a mode where you can zoom the flash, i.e. they go from 17mm to around 200mm. That 17mm is if you've got a 17mm lens on, which is a wide angle, you'll get a big spread of light and with 200 millimetres, it's as if you've got a 70 to 200 on, for example, at 200 millimetres, it'll give you a narrow beam of light. But what we can do is we can shoot with a wide angle lens, we can shoot with, say, a 17 mil lens, but we can zoom the lens, zoom the flash in to 200 millimetres, so we get a nice narrow beam of light. So light's not going everywhere, it's going just where we need it to. When I'm using a hard light source like this, I'm very particular where I put my light. For example, when the light comes out, it's going to be hard and harsh and not soft like when you use a softbox or a brolly. So when we're photographing Liana, what happens is the light comes out of here, hard and harsh, and if it's coming from the side, it can cast shadows across her face from her nose, for example. So I tend to put the flash more directly towards her face. So if I'm using a, a flash like this off away from my camera, I'll have my camera set up and I'll have the flash not very far away. So that's a good little tip there. If it's too close to the face, you can have some harsh shadows across the face and it, it doesn't look great. When shooting with flash, the best way to think about it is it's two exposures. You're exposing for the natural light, which is the ambient light around us, and also you're exposing for your flash. So you'll press your camera shutter down, the shutter will open, and your camera will expose for the, for the light, the natural light around us, then your flash will fire, and it'll expose for that light too, and then the shutter will close. So you've got in effect two exposures, your ambient light and your flash. So I always, always set my exposure for the ambient light first without even using my flash and then I set my flash up. So I'll show you how we do this. James has done a reading for the ambient light and he's shooting at ISO 100 at a 250th of a second at 2.8. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our light meter to a 250th of a second at ISO 100 and we're going to meter and see if we can get our flash set to 2.8. There you go, 2.8, just slightly over. With no flash, Liana is underexposed, but the background is perfect. With the flash, the picture is looking great. Next, we're going to shoot by the bridge. The video footage shows a nice day, but by underexposing the ambient light, we have darkened the scene nicely. Adding flash just completes this picture. For our next scene, we're going to use a couple of tall buildings to the other side of this busy road as our backdrop. This is also next to a bus stop, so hopefully we can get some London buses in the final picture. We are using a polarizer to reduce the reflections from the glass buildings. It also saturates the sky, giving a nice deep blue. It's very similar to the last shot. You can see where I'm holding the flash. And a bus for that classic London look. I love shooting in London. There are countless opportunities for pictures and the bonus of being some of the most iconic and recognisable backgrounds in the world. Everything from urban landscapes and graffiti to parks and gardens. Finally, we've come to the Millennium Bridge with St Paul's in the background. The same as before, look how amazing just a simple composition can be with all the right ingredients. 